People make time for everything and everyone else in their life, but they never make time for themselves. If you go up to someone who you know and say, like, would you like to catch up for coffee? Let's, let's do coffee. They're like, oh, I can't this week, but I can next week. How about Thursday, 7 p.m.? Perfect, I'll see you at this place. When was the last time someone is willing to take time out of their life to spend time with themselves? So if I wanted to get to know you, and we've had one dinner, and we had a great conversation, we're spending time here. If I wanted to get to know you, I would have to spend time with you. We'd have to meet up for coffee, a glass of wine. If I really want to get to know you, maybe we meet up once a week. Every Friday night, we go out for a glass of wine, we chat for a couple of hours. After a year, I'd get to know you really well, you'd get to know me really well. But it requires me spending time with you. So if you want to get to know yourself, you need to spend time with yourself. But in a, in a way that you can inquire, right? So people say to me things like, oh, I walk my dog in the park, that's my time with myself. And they're like, no, it's not. That's you walking the dog. People go like, oh, I, you know, I go for a jog, that's my alone time. No, that's you jogging, avoiding traffic, watching where you're stepping so you don't trip and fall over. Spending time with yourself is sitting down, closing your eyes, not interacting with the outside world and actually going inside and having that conversation, the same conversation I would have with you and say like, hey Brian, so where, where did you grow up? You know, you said California, do you like to surf? No, hate the water, love the water. Tell me, right? Mm. And people don't have that conversation and because they don't have that conversation with themselves, they don't end up knowing what they want in life. Because they don't know what they want in life, they can't focus that finite amount of energy and then they don't live a lifestyle that brings them happiness and most people end up being unhappy. A couple of things I would say, one is simplify your life. Everybody's so busy. Everybody's got a lot of things to do. We don't actually have a lot of things to do. Right, we like being distracted because yeah. then we don't have to think about ourselves. We, yeah, and we, we don't have priorities in life. Most people don't have clear priorities in life. You know, I, for me, my goal is to simplify my life, simplify the number of people in my life, and simplify the number of things in my life. We only have a finite amount of energy each day, right? But every year, we have more people in our lives. Is that a fair statement? You more Facebook friends, you have more people you're connected with, yeah. but your energy stays the same. So that's not a proportionate growth. If your energy is increasing every year proportionately with the number of things and people in your life, then we don't have to talk about this. But your energy level is the same. But the amount of people and things in your life are growing almost exponentially. So whereas that doesn't work. So for me, it's always about simplifying first the people and things into your life, into who and what's most important. Taking that finite energy that you have each day and focusing. Second step is learning how to focus and concentrate that finite amount of energy into the people and things that truly matter. Now you start to create a lifestyle that you actually love because you invest into people and things that matter. And the byproduct of that is happiness. And you said happiness is not a goal. Is that it's, correct? Yes, happiness is not a goal. And if you ask most people, what do you want in life? They say, I want to be happy. Right? Would that be a fair statement? I mean, yeah, literally, it's in, the, it's in the US Constitution, I think, the pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness. Right. I always say you should never pursue happiness. Don't pursue happiness. Pursue a lifestyle where the byproduct of that lifestyle is happiness. So happiness comes as a byproduct. I spend time with the people that I love. What is my byproduct? I'm happy. I spend time with people I don't like. I'm not happy. So don't pursue happiness. Pursue a lifestyle that gives happiness. But in order to then to pursue that lifestyle, you need to be clear what you want in life. What's your purpose in life? And people don't know this because they don't spend any time with themselves. People think that the more you meditate, the better it is. So 20 minutes of meditation is not as great as three hours of meditation. Um, and it's actually not how we work. For us, we believe in quality as opposed to quantity. We spend the whole day preparing to meditate. What comes before meditation? Concentration. Concentration comes before meditation. So you need to learn how to concentrate in order to meditate. And we believe that you can't meditate if you can't concentrate. So we spend the whole day focusing on concentration. 
So when I spoke with someone in the monastery, I spoke with another monk, I gave them my undivided attention. When I worked on my laptop, I focused on working on my laptop. When I swept the sidewalk, I focused on sweeping the sidewalk. So throughout the day, I'm practicing concentration. Now when I go to sit down to meditate, I'm really focused and I can have a dynamic meditation session. And I always use the simple analogy of, you know, take Usain Bolt, for example, the sprinter, right? I don't know much about him except he won three gold medals, fastest man on earth from Jamaica. I can make an assumption and tell me if I'm wrong that his whole day is structured, that he eats the right kinds of food and drinks the right amount of water. He goes to the gym. If you look at the boy, he's ripped, right? Probably works out, runs every day, I'm sure, sprints, does all kinds of things. But his whole day is preparing him for what, 9.57 seconds or whatever it is his world record is, not the other way around. And people come up to me all the time, Brian, and they say, Dr. Pani, I'm so stressed out, I've got so much happening in my life, do you think if I meditate for five minutes in the morning, you know, it'll, it'll help my whole day? I'm going like, well, what are you doing the remaining 23 hours and 55 minutes? That's what I want to know. Because if you try to meditate for five minutes in the morning and the rest of the day you just live a chaotic life, that's not, yeah, it's a good start, but it's not really helping you. It's like eating a carrot in the morning and then eating hamburgers and fries all day and hoping to have a healthy diet. You have to understand that your whole day, your lifestyle is what's going to support your meditation practice at the start. And then, it, then your meditation practice grows and then it turns around and supports your lifestyle, right. but not the other way around. You don't create a meditation practice to support your lifestyle. You create a lifestyle first, meditation second.